problems uh, faced by the horticulture sector in India. So first, first problem is uh, water scarcity. This you know. So around uh, earlier also we have understood 60% of the agriculture in India is rain fed. Rain fed, it is dependent on the monsoons. Monsoons are known for their vagaries. So only 40% of the area has assured irrigation. Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus IS. Right today is our 48th day. Right today we are going to study about the horticulture sector or horticulture farming in India. So previously we have covered like agricultural sector and also uh, yesterday we have covered animal husbandry. Animal husbandry or you can say animal rearing also so we have seen the major aspects there right so parallelly or similarly according to that change today we will cover the horticulture sector also so after animal husbandry or we can say the in the entire agricultural sector the importance of horticulture is horticulture is uh, is being increased so of uh, i mean two to three years back the value if you see in the value terms the value of horticulture sector has surpassed the uh, we can say the agriculture sector that is the crops part what are the cereals and crops are there so the value in terms of value if you see the value of agriculture sector has surpassed that of the crops uh, part so in this way it is assuming lot of importance the horticulture sector uh, i mean because of the changes in the society especially uh, with the food habits of the people the importance of horticulture sector is increasing right and uh, one more thing you should remember that so it is a uh, dense highly dense crop i mean when you, when we see in value terms so the horticulture crops have very good value when we compare to the cereal crops so <coughs> even the quantity of production is less the farmers or the cultivators they tend to get more value or money for their production especially uh, especially if you see the floriculture uh, i mean cultivation of flowers so because of the changes that are coming in the social society especially in celebrating occasions uh, occasions like marriages etc so the flowers are increasingly being used there so demand for different types of flowers is increasing so in this way it is adding lot of value not only to the agricultural sector we can say but also to the entire economy of the country and it is co contributing immensely to the gdp of the country right so this is some introduction about the horticulture sector in india right so it is if you see the definition it is a vital branch of agriculture right so it is dedicated to the intensive cultivation of plants directly utilized by humans for sustenance medical purposes and aesthetic enrichment so remember whatever the medicinal plantations are are there they will also come in the horticulture sector only right so scope if you see so it has a large scale uh, large scope including diverse flora uh, diverse flora including vegetables fruit crops flowers herbs and as well as ornamental or exotic plant so it is comprising of all this we can say fauna etymology the word horticul horticulture is coming from hortus meaning garden so this is the etymology so pioneers if we see in the horticulture sector we have to uh, we should know about two uh, two people uh, first person is lh bailey he is acknowledged as the father of american horticulture when it come to uh, when it comes to india mh marigauda so he revered as the father of indian horticulture sector 
right so this is a brief brief overview about the horticulture sector in india right next we will see the classification within the horticulture sector so it is very important from the prelims point of view there may be a question on this uh, we can say vocabulary or <coughs> technical terms first one is pomology so it encompasses the process of planting harvesting and storing processing marketing of fruit and nut crops so pomology is about the cultivation and the marketing of fruit and nut crops next one is olericulture olericulture is about vegetables vegetables cultivation marketing etc harvesting everything so it is olericulture is about vegetable cultivation next is arboriculture so it is uh, study selection and maintenance of individual trees shrubs and other perennial woody plants so it is uh, arboriculture is about this one next one is ornamental horticulture so it has two sub categories one is floriculture so it is uh, production utilization and marketing of floral crops next one is landscape horticulture it is devoted to the uh, cultivation and commercialization commercialization of plants utilized for in enhancing outdoor environments aesthetics so basically it is associated with the outdoor decoration outdoor decoration right so this is the classification of uh, horticulture so try to remember them you can get this vocabulary in the prelims and uh, the explanation may be uh, asked in the prelims examination right next is latest data if you see on the india's horticulture sector production so in the 2022 23 uh, financial year we have seen uh, there is 351 million uh, million tons of horticulture production is there so it is surpassing even the food gain production also so in value terms also 2 to 3 years back in value terms also the horticulture sector has uh we can say crossed the food grain production now recently in the last financial year in terms of production also production also the horticulture sector has surpassed the food grain production so the production is around 351 metric tons million million metric tons right so the uh, it represents an increase of about 4.74 million tons when we compare to the previous year that is 1.37 percent of increase when we compare it to the previous year so if we see the uh, component of fruits and vegetables in this both fruits and vegetables they are uh, driving this uh, growth in horticulture sector fruit production is estimated at 108.34 million tons up from 107.51 in the previous year similarly if we see the vegetable production it is estimated at 212.91 million, uh, million tons compared to 209.14 million tons million tons in the previous year so try to remember these figures so there may be a question on the trends of the production of horticulture sector in the horticulture sector also they will be useful for mains so you can quote these figures in the mains examination so that will look beautiful when you are giving the data or quoting the data and substant substancing your uh, points then it will uh, go better in the mains examination right so if we see the uh, global uh, if we see if we compare globally it is the second largest producer globally so india is the second largest producer when it comes to horti horticulture sector in in uh, i mean at the global level so india is presently at the world's second largest producer of fruits vegetables and ranks first in specific crops like banana lime and lemon papaya and okra so if we see this individual productions individual crops india ranks uh, number 1 right 
so this uh, horticulture sector it makes a contribution approximately 33% to the gva of the agriculture sector so yesterday we have seen one fourth of the gva is coming from the animal husbandry so more than this almost one third one third is being contributed by the uh, horticulture sector horticulture is com uh, i mean contributing to 33% i mean that is one third of the total gva in the agriculture sector so this is the importance or significance of the horticulture sector when it comes to gdp and uh, percentage in uh, contribution to the gva of agriculture all right now we will try and understand the significance or importance of the uh, horticulture sector in india first is economic contribution just now we have seen the economic contribution of the horticulture sector so in value terms and also in uh, production uh, quantity terms it has surpassed the food grain production food grain production not only in terms of value but also in terms of total production so one more point is it contributes to over 33% of overall grass value added to the agricultural sector uh, sector when we see the exports also especially agricultural exports so we have seen the uh, agricultural exports uh, of india are approximately 30 to 35 billion dollars so in that exports the uh, horticulture sector it shares a substantial share in the total agricultural product exports especially with fruits and vegetables they are being the major export commodities right so this sector provides livelihood opportunities to millions of farmers and workers particularly in rural areas so as part of the doubling of farmers income also and also Uh, if we see broadly to eradicate poverty in rural india so the cultivation of cultivation of these horticulture crops horticulture crops is being uh, promoted highly uh, whether it may be medicinal plants or high value crops like fruit cultivation fruit cultivation right next also floriculture also emphasis is being made on floriculture also so when these types of crops are grown uh, in i mean in place of the traditional um, food grain crops uh, especially the food grain crops are being grown for subsistence so instead of if we replace those uh, food grain crops with high value crops like these the poverty can be better addressed poverty can be better addressed and poverty can be eliminated from especially the rural areas right next is uh, nutritional security so yesterday when we were studying about the horticulture sector uh, we have seen how the uh, the animal husbandry it contributes to nutritional diversity nutritional diversity and it enhances or diversifies the food food basket and in that way it is ensuring food security all right so similarly uh, the horticulture sector in terms of fruits vegetables mushrooms etc so it is providing nutri nutritional sec uh, security to the people of india so in this way it is also contributing to dietary diversity or diversifying the food basket of the people and it is ensuring nutritional security to the people of india right so if we see one study of who world health, health organization inadequate fruit and vegetable consumption it is estimated to cause around 2.8 million deaths globally each year so if fruits and vegetables they are consumed properly we can save lot of people so especially children uh, you know in india the stunting stunting and wasting 
these two are a very severe, severe problem when it comes to children in india so if uh, proper consumption of food fruits and vegetables is there so we can address these aspects of children to a larger extent right next is environmental benefits so through agroforestry and organic farming so fruits and vegetables are generally especially the fruits part so it is it goes very well with the agroforestry and organic farming uh, vegetables uh, production vegetable production it goes very well with organic for farming so by adapting these methods agroforestry and organic farming we can protect the environment and also biodiversity so through these methods we can promote soil health water conservation and biodiversity conservation also right so these uh, these are the environmental benefits that can occur from practicing of horticulture right next is technology innovation so through the technological innovations technological innovations so whatever the inventions are there we can spread them to other sectors in agriculture other sectors in agriculture and also the uh, by investing in research and development in this particular sector we are witnessing a boost in the research and uh, research and development in the entire agriculture sector also so in this way it is uh, the horticulture sector is contributing to uh, technology and innovation in the country right so next is aesthetic aesthetic value and the cultural value so horticulture contributes to cultural heritage preservation through cultivation of traditional and indigenous plant varieties so once the emphasis is again being made on the uh, agroforestry etc so agroforestry we have seen and also the cultivation of fruit trees fruit trees we can bring back the cultural value of uh, growing tree pl uh, fruit plants nearby the settlements or nearby houses so that culture is being again brought back in this way we can protect the the uh, we can say traditional uh, tree varieties tree varieties and in this way we can conserve biodiversity also right so they are uh, when the trees are grown uh, grown in nearby areas the aesthetic value of that area is also aesthetic value of that uh, area will also increases similarly public and private gardens botanical parks and floral displays they attract tourism and promote cultural exchange so this is the significance of uh, horticulture sector when we see uh, the importance of horticulture and how it is contributing to the betterment of people so this part the significance part it is not only for prelims but the from the point of view of mains exams also this part is very very important right next is problems uh, faced by the horticulture sector in india so first first problem is uh, water scarcity this you know so around uh, earlier also we have understood 60% of the agriculture in india is rain fed rain fed it is dependent on the monsoons monsoons are known for their vagaries so only 40% of the area has assured irrigation so so wherever this water availability is there 40% of the area their food crops are given priority food crops are given priority because of various reasons including social and economic reasons so basically this is confined to cultivation of fruit and vegetable crops is confined to we can say uh, one thing is uh, non rain available areas or we can say unirrigated areas and also the fertile non fertile it is confined to non fertile areas fertile areas right so this is the one of the major problem so water scarcity indian agriculture faces water scarcity so in this uh, scenario 
the fruit trees uh, fruit cultivation or for that matter any other uh, cultivation like med- growing of medicinal plants etc it is diverted to the waterless area or dry areas right next is land degradation so according to the icar it estimates that around 147 million hectares of land area is affected by degradation impacting soil health and agricultural productivity so uh, i mean because of the conditions we have discussed here so india subsistence agriculture is uh, in vogue majority of the pro- farmers are uh, practicing it so the priority is priority is surviving from the hunger so food crops are given priority so in a scenario where land land degradation is taking place on a high we can say high volume so in the previous classes also we have understood that land degradation along with the soil er- erosion and uh, uh desertification it is one of the major challenges faced by the indian agriculture sector so whatever the degraded land is there that is dedicated to dedicated to the cultivation of fruit crops or vegetable crops or it is dedicated to the horticulture sector right so land degradation it is the second problem faced by the horticulture sector in india third one is climate change so as you all know the impact of climate change on the agriculture so the temperatures are changing so because the tolerance of the crops will also change so the crops which are ab- adapted or that grow in uh, lesser temperatures so that uh, those cannot uh, no longer grow in the increased temperature conditions so because of that the productivity and the production production and the product productivity they are growing down so according to the estimate of imd so the frequency and the intensity of extreme weather events in india such as heat waves cyclones and heavy rainfall these are occurring uh, they have increased in recent uh, recent year so they are directly uh, impacting the agriculture impacting the agriculture so the horticulture uh, sector uh, so it is being highly sensitive highly sensitive to the these kind of changes so the damages whenever these things are occurring these uh, extreme events are occurring they are highly sensitive to these kind of uh, events so they are facing similar uh, severe problems for example the floriculture floriculture it is highly sensitive to minor changes like temperature changes in temperature uh, changes in we can say availability of water so when extreme he- uh, events like these happen they are uh, there is a high scope of these crops being damaged right next is small land holdings so we know this problem very well india approximately 86% of the people have people are either sorry farmers are either small or marginal farmers so the small land patches they are not that much suitable for extensive cultivation like growing fruit crops for example fruit crops they require huge land patches huge land patches or holdings then only they are commercially viable so when it comes to horticulture small plant uh, plot size is sufficient we can go we can practice floriculture on small plot uh, or we can say land patches when it comes to fruit crops uh, it is not that much uh, we can say possible it is not commercially feasible right next is another important aspect very very uh, important lack of infrastructure so the according to the ministry of food processing and industry it estimates that uh, post harvest losses in india are approximately 30 to 40% right there is also a study from the cipher right it is an institute working in the horticulture sector so it estimates that the wastage post ha- post harvest wastages are approximately 40% in india so the fruits and vegetables if you see the fruits and the vegetables their shelf life is very less i mean they can be preserved only for few time fewer days when we compare to other crops like food crops cereals etc their shelf life is very very less so they are very much prone to 
uh, we can say damage right or we can say wastage so in this way uh, the perishability of these uh, uh, we can say products is very high so they are highly perishable so to store them and to uh, properly transport them and to sell them in the market proper uh, we can say infrastructure is required infrastructure is required once they are harvested proper infra infrastructure is required like cold storages cold storages are required for storage and also uh, we can say chilled containers are required while uh, transporting them and also proper marketing facilities should be there so that they can be properly sold in the market right so this is about so however if you see the post harvest uh, losses it is approximately 30 to 40 percent and that too the horticulture products be, uh, they being highly perishable the loss after the post harvest is very high so one study another study says that only 10 percent of the perishable produce in india is processed so if you see the food processing industry also only 10 percent of the uh, perishable products that are coming from the agriculture sector they are being processed compared to 60 to 70 percent in developing countries highlighting the need for investment in the food processing infrastructure so there are several uh, several schemes for uh, food processing also so we, we will see or discuss them in the main topics about the food processing it is most important from the from the main point of view we will discuss the food processing there however you can understand here only 10 percent of the uh, perishable produce is processed in india the two the fruits and vegetables uh, they are highly being highly uh, perishable this uh, component has to be increased a lot right next another uh, important challenge is pests and uh, diseases so outbreaks like pests and diseases uh, and invasive species which are dangerous to the native species they pose a significant uh, threats to crop health and uh, productivity right so for that we need effective pest management right however uh, we have we do not have sustainable pest management practices we highly dependent on synthetic pesticides so we highly depend on synthetic pesticides for weed management and pest management. So they are, they are harmful to human health. So when the fruits and vegetables, they are being sprayed by the synthetic uh, pesticides. So it is highly, uh, we can say dangerous for human health when humans consume them. So these are the challenges that are faced by the horticulture sector in India. So use of these pesticides and uh, we can say for some extent of fertilizers. So when they are being used, the exports become very, very difficult. Exports become very, very difficult because the countries uh, or regions like U U European Union, they have very highly strict provisions or conditions for importing the I mean the products especially the agricultural products where the use of pesticides and uh, fertilizers is very very high so these kind of problems are there right so these are the challenges faced by the horticulture sector in India right now we will, we will see some of the schemes some of the important schemes that are there for the improvement of horticulture sector in India. First and most important scheme is the mission for integrated development of horticulture, MID. So this is the most important and broad scheme when it comes to horticulture sector, right? The mission for integrated development of horticulture. So it is a comprehensive scheme. Comprehensive means many other sub schemes are there in the, this particular scheme. So it is aimed at fostering growth of the horticulture sector, encompassing wide array of product produce such as fruits, vegetables, roots and tuber crops. Many other crops are there. So we will see the list of crops. Apart from these fruits and vegetables, root and tuber crops, mushrooms are there, spices are there, flowers are there 
aromatic plants are there coconut cashew nut cocoa and bamboo so all these come under the horticulture sector so the scheme is covering all these we can say horticulture crops so it is uh, works under the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare and it is invoked from the 2014 and 15 right as part of the green revolution krishonnati yojana right so it allows a funding pattern of 60 from the central government and 40 for the from the state government for normal states and uh, for uh, 60 uh, sorry 90% and 10% when it comes to the special category states and northeastern states or northeastern states and the himalayan region so the contribution is 90% and 10% so for other states the contribution is 60% and 40% 60% is coming from central government 40% is uh contribute 40% all right so if we see the sub schemes of the uh mid uh there are three sub schemes in the mid right first one is for first sub scheme is national horticulture uh, culture mission so nhm national horticulture mission it is executed by state horticulture missions across selected districts in 18 states and 6 union territories next scheme is horticulture mission for northeast and himalaya himalayan states so it is the sub scheme that focuses on a holistic development of horticulture in northeast and the himalayan region third one is central institute for horticulture cah it is established in nagaland in 2006 and 7 it serves as a crucial uh, hub for providing technical support through capacity building and training programs for farmers and the field functionaries especially in the northeastern region right so these three are the important components of the mission for integrated development of horticulture right next second important scheme it is the horticulture cluster development program so when we focus on the clusters for industries also we are focusing on cluster development so the same idea has been implemented being implemented here also we are focusing on cluster development right so the horti- uh, horticulture cluster development program it is a central initiative aimed at aimed at nurturing and enhancing uh, the identified horticulture clusters to achieve global competitiveness right so the cluster represents a concentrated region so uh, the concentrated region where the hortic- horticulture production is uh, concentrated for example if we take the northeastern states so they are f- famous for oranges so here a cluster for oranges can be developed so this is the idea behind the cluster development right so the clusters represent a concentrated regions where specific horticulture crops can thrive or thrive right so it is administered by the national horticulture board under the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare so till now it has identified 55 such horticulture clusters national but in the entire country till now 55 such clusters have been identified right if we see the primary objectives of this scheme elevating exports of targeted crops by around 20% so there is i mean targets are fixed uh, for improving the or elevating the exports of targeted products to around by around 20% similarly by fostering this can be achieved by fostering creation of cluster specific brands to boost competitiveness of these crops so the focus is also there uh, there on brand building so brand also plays very very important uh, role in the marketing when it comes to marketing so the focus is there uh, is there on branding also next next important uh, objective is tackling uh, major challenges across the indian horticulture sector spanning 
प्री प्रोडक्शन प्रोडक्शन एंड पोर पोस्ट हार्वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट लॉजिस्टिक्स मार्केटिंग एंड ब्रांडिंग सो द फोकस इज देयर ऑन दीज एस्पेक्ट्स आल्सो नेक्स्ट वन इज हार्नेसिंग जियोग्राफिकल स्पेशलाइजेशन टू प्रमोट इंटीग्रेटेड मार्केट ड्रिवेन डेवलपमेंट विद इन हॉर्टिकल्चर क्लस्टर्स राइट नेक्स्ट इज कन्वर्जेंस राइट so uh, aligning with other government initiatives such as agriculture infrastructure uh, development fund to ensure coordinated efforts and uh, optimal outcomes so there is an emphasis on convergence also in uh, through the scheme right right so this is about the uh, horticulture sector and it's significant and in the end we have seen two important schemes related to horticulture sector also now we will see uh, some of the previous uh, year questions that have been asked from this topic first question it is asked in 2016 the question is with reference to pradhan mantri fasal bhima yojana consider the following statements right first statement is under this scheme farmers will have to pay a uniform uh, premium uh, of 2% for any crop cultivated to cultivate in any sector season of the year so basically you can uh, identify that this is a wrong statement because the contribution of the premium uh, by the farmers it in the kharif season if you see it is 2% if you see in the ravi uh, rabi season it is 1.5% if you see the uh, crops like horticulture horticulture crops the contribution is or uh, the plantation crops uh, which uh, give production annually so the uh, premium contribution is us, or premium contribution is 5% right so for horticulture component it is 5% so the first statement is incorrect next is the scheme covers post harvest losses arising out of cyclones and unseasonal rains so this is statement is a correct the scheme is covering post harvest losses arising out of the natural uh, natural disasters like cyclones and unseasonal rains however this cover is confined to only 2 weeks from the harvest harvesting time right so however time is not given here so no problem this statement is correct so the correct option is option b statement 2 only correct right next uh, uh, next question the question is in the context of food and nutritional security in india or of india enhancing the seed replacement rates of various crops helps in achieving the food production targets of the uh, of the future but what is the cons- constraint or constraints in its wider greater implementation so seed the question is about seed replacement rate so seed replacement means so first uh, one crop is grown the generally the farmers will uh, tend to use the seeds that have been uh, taken from the production and they again you will use the seeds of the previous crop to grow the new crop so this is the uh, if we see economically or ecologically this is not a good practice so whatever the seeds uh, that are coming from the previous cro- crop they are not that high yielding so we have to use uh, special seeds uh, that are grown especially in the through the uh, through the uh, in the laboratories for using as the seed for the next crop so generally these uh, seeds will be hybrid seeds so the the seed replacement rate is the amount or percentage of seeds new seeds that are being used to grow a crop so the percentage of new seeds that are used for cultivating that rate uh, ratio is called the seed replacement ratio right so the question is about the seed replacement ratio uh, the question is asking what are the challenges in improving the seed replacement ratio first option here is first statement is there is no national seed uh, seed seeds policy in place so this statement is incorrect because we have a national seed policy of 
to there is a seed policy but it is not working properly that is the problem second statement is there is no participation of private sector seed companies in the supply of quality seeds of vegetables and planting materials of horticulture crops so this statement is also incorrect because many private companies are there yesterday also we have discussed so many private companies are working especially uh, in the seeds uh, area and uh, they are claiming income tax exemption by showing that they uh, income is coming from the agriculture so when it comes to vegetables so majority of the percentage of the seeds they are coming from the private companies only private companies are producing the seeds of the vegetable crops so when it comes to the uh, planting materials of uh, horticulture crops so the private companies are providing the planting material but however the ratio is very less so they are providing at a minor scale the planting material for horticulture crops so in this there are private players who are providing uh, the seeds and the planting material so this statement is also incorrect third statement there is a demand supply gap uh, regarding the quality seeds in case of low value high value crops so this statement is correct low value high uh, low value high volume crops are crops like wheat rice and millet so they are grown high i mean in high volumes high quantities but when we see the value value of these uh, crops the value is lesser when we compare to high value crops so in this area in this area there is a demand supply gap so the, uh, the demand for new seeds is high here however the supply is low because the profits are lesser here uh, the private companies only work with the motive of profit maximization so because there is a, a, there are a lower profits they are not producing sufficient seeds in this area the high uh, low value high volume crops area so this statement is correct there is a demand supply gap in this category of crops right right select the correct answer using the code be- uh, given below so the correct option is option b only statement 3 is correct right right so this is uh, about the horticulture and uh, these are the questions that are asked previously from this topic right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day